Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. Welcome, Welcome back to the Zamas podcast, podcast, where we focus on faith, family, fitness, finances, and, and friendships. friendships. Today, I'm going to be reading from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 through 32. And it reads, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're going to get into that verse of scripture some more in a second here, and we're also going to reveal our topic. But first, we want to answer some questions from Let's Get Deep, uh, and I'm going to let my wife take it away. Yes, first of all, tag them down below. Let's get deep to sponsor. For sure. Thank you. For sure. So first we're going to do icebreaker. Okay, icebreaker. Let me read it. Okay. All right, icebreaker. It says Apple or Android? I just knew you weren't going to pronounce the last one. Why not? Android. You hate Android. (laughs) Well, it's not that I hate Android. It's just, they're just not it. Yeah. I would say Apple. Apple. Yes. Actually, hold on. I got to tell a story. Because when we first got together, she was sold on the Android and I couldn't stand it. I would text her and the green bubbles would pop up. It made my skin itch. But then her phone broke. I I prayed and her phone broke. Like shattered. It shattered. Okay. So she had to go and get an iPhone. All right. And I was looking at another Android that was like, oh, it would be cheap for this. And and they they sold me. And it was basically free. And I'm like, all right. God is good. Okay. And I've been stuck ever since. Deep. Okay. Who was the best coworker you've ever had and why? Slack. The best coworker I've ever had? And why? Uh, the best coworker I've ever had. Wow. That is a really good question. I've had some great coworkers. Um the best coworker I've ever That's had. Tough. I'm gonna go tough. ahead and answer first while okay, you think. Go ahead. Cause um, I'm gonna say the best coworker I ever had was um probably Amina, Amina or my homegirl Maya. Like when we worked at Publix in the deli, work was just lit whenever we was there. Like I when we was on the schedule, we came to play and work, but really play. It was so fun. <laughs> It was um, so fun. Oh, uh, this is really so that whole six ninety one Q. Amina, Maya, Deborah, like all of them. I'm gonna have to say, I'm gonna have to say my boy Frank. Yeah, my boy Frank Awusu. Well, we worked together at Publix, um, at store five oh five. Oh, at store five eighty five, excuse me. Um yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say Frank. Wow. He was a clown. Because he was a clown. I just look forward to working with him. He clowned yeah. all day. Yeah. But yeah. he but he worked hard. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So he didn't just clown. He worked hard as well. So that's, he's he's my, he, I'm going to have to go with him. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what stories from your life will you tell your children? Um, Stories from my life that I would tell my children. Um, How we met. Yeah, for sure. Um. How they were conceived? Oh, not in detail, <laughs> you know. But but you know, I'm gonna dramatize it in story form. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say that how we met, and then how they were conceived. I think I'm gonna say how how we met, and I would say the birthing process for both of them. And our first of everything, like our first apartment, mm. our first car together, that's our good. first house. Like yeah, that's good. All of that. Yeah, that's good. I think I want to change my answer. You can change your answer. I can't? You can't. Okay. You can. What you want to say? Okay, so I'm going to say <laughs> how we met. And now I want to keep my answer. Okay, like I give you the, okay. I give you the one. Because I can't find nothing else. You answer them. I like the the our first apartment, our first house. I like that. Yeah. So it's pretty dope to see them because we see that now, like when the memories, like they be popping up. And, oh no, I do. I, I'm sorry. Hold on. This is it. Okay. How we met. 
and then how they were as children. I'm definitely going to tell them that, how they acted as children. Yeah, we got the proof. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We got technology now, so that we keeping all heavy. the footage. Oh, I'll sure. be looking at herself like... Oh, she is something else. <laughs> Yeah, so Both that's it. All right, so that wraps up our questions. We're going to go ahead and get into our topic. All right, so our topic for this week is going to be forgiveness. All right, extremely, extremely important. All right, so in terms of forgiveness, sweetheart, let me ask you a question. Okay. What do you feel is the hardest part about forgiveness? Not for yourself, but just for most people, generally speaking. Like, what's the hardest part about forgiveness? Um... When the situation isn't what you would desire it to be, meaning you have to forgive somebody that isn't necessarily forgivable. Mm. Not saying that anyone is not forgivable, but like if someone did something to you mm -hmm. in a way that broke you, mm -hmm. like broke you down. Yeah. How you like to you have to forgive them, and they not necessarily think that anything is wrong with right. what they did to you. Right. So that aspect of forgiving is difficult. Yeah. I feel like that's a general like statement. Yeah. Yeah. No, what that's good. You? That's extremely good. Um, I agree with that statement one hundred percent. Um. I would say the most difficult part about forgiveness for most people is them coming to the understanding that forgiveness is not for the other person, mm -hmm. it's for themselves. Yeah. Right? We got to understand that forgiveness is not solely for the person that you're forgiven, but it's more for you. It's yeah. more of a benefit for you to forgive than for that other person to be forgiven. All right, so I want to elaborate a little bit on that. You know, oftentimes people say, well, this person did this to me, that person did that, or this person doesn't deserve my forgiveness, or, you know, how can I forgive them when such and such thing happened? All right, we got to understand that forgiveness is something that frees you from the burden of having someone else have power, enough power to to you control know you. control you in a way right and still control a part of your heart right forgiveness is 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 something that's necessary for anyone to grow all right in order for you to grow and get to that next level you have to forgive you have to let go of the things that happened in the past right that's really what forgiveness is it's letting go of the things that happened in the past mm -hmm. all right and if you're not willing to let go of the things that happened in the past then there's no way you can make it to your future. There's no way you can get to that next level because you're still holding on to baggage from the past. Mm -hmm. And that's a very dangerous place to be, right? So many people get caught up in, you know, what happened to them that it's, 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 almost, it's paralyzing, mm -hmm. right? It's almost like they're, they're walking zombies, right? They're dead already yeah. because they, they, they see no life ahead of them because they're so caught up on what happened that they just can't get past it, right? They feel so broken, so damaged, um, that it's very hard for them to move on, right? And to accept what did happen, forgive the person, and 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 just move on, right? And accept that you still have life ahead of you, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's very it's very difficult for most people to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I have another question, darling. Okay. Um, in terms of forgiveness, what do you think? is the best way to go about forgiving someone do you think you should verbalize it to them do you think it should be an internal thing like 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 what should be the the form of forgiveness like what's a true form of forgiveness i feel like a true form of forgiveness first of all there's steps to forgiveness like it's okay. not like explain i forgive you okay i'm letting it go and Boom, that's it. Never speak about it, hear about it. Right. Nothing. That's not the fact. Right. Um, the first step of forgiveness is forgiving yourself. Mm. Like, you that's have good. to forgive yourself and realize that, okay, you're not the cause for someone hurting you. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. in some situations, you know, I know it's a two way street. Like, you might have done something to cause someone to react mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. 
way worse than you did. But in most situations, when we're talking about you having to forgive somebody, you have to forgive yourself first. That is doing the self-work. That means if you did something to cause someone to do something to you, accepting that accountability that yeah. you did have a part to take in that. Yeah. Um, not necessarily blaming yourself for allowing someone to hurt you, but to start that work of self-care, self-love. Yeah. Isolate yourself, get yourself together first yeah. because you can't address forgiving somebody that hurts you if you're still like torn by it. Yeah. Like cuz you're part that's a nugget. Yeah, your part, like the what you have to say and what you want to speak on is not going to be heard right. because you're saying it in tears. You're mm-hmm. saying it in anger. Like you're not going to be able to get your point across. Right. And like you said in the beginning, the whole point of forgiveness is to allow yourself to still live after being hurt, yeah. you know, like to still live beyond whatever happened to you. Like you have to forgive yourself and you have to be able to look whoever it is that hurt you in the eye, or maybe that's not the case, but at least have a conversation with them, mm-hmm. rather you write them, whether you say it on the phone, via text message, say it in their face, like whatever that process is to where you fully vent and get everything out that you wanted to say, mm-hmm. that's the next step. The third step is truly forgiving them and saying, I love you. Like, and just because you forgive somebody, they don't still have to be in your life. Like, right. that's never the case. Like, right, right. Someone hurts you to the point where it's just like, that's a boundary and a standard. And a, like, there's certain lines for everybody that you just don't cross. Absolutely. Like, you just don't. Absolutely. You don't cross. Like, if you cut me, that's a line that you cross. Mm-hmm. You're never going to be in my presence ever again. Mm-hmm. I forgive you. I love you. But, like, you can't be in my space. You can't sure. be in my environment. So I feel like those are like it's a it's steps to three step process. It's yeah. I'll say it's about five steps, like yeah. honestly, but like it is a it's a long process of forgiveness, but it's a long process of forgiveness because people are constantly fighting themselves. Okay, so I got a question for you now. What's your question, though? Okay, so you know, a little personal. What is one of the biggest things that you had to forgive? One of the biggest things I've had to forgive. Like that you uh, had to work through personally. Um, I'll be quite honest. I, I, I've always had a very hard time with um, holding grudges. Yeah. I've always had a very hard time with, like, unforgiveness. <laughs> Like, I've always been quick to forgive. Yeah. Uh, my heart just can't, like, I don't got a spot in there for un- for, for unforgiveness. The whole life of I don't. Like, it's very difficult for me. Like, I have to actually, like, think about it. And I, I, we have our daughter in here. Okay? Yeah. She don't want to go to sleep. So, um, I have to, like, consciously think about what somebody did to me, like, over and over and over again in order for me to. And I've never so like, done it. So, like, the most hurtful thing that that you've experienced? The most hurtful thing I've experienced, I think, maybe was when I was, like, 10 or 11 years old, my mom told me that my dad said that he didn't want anything to do with me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Looking back, looking back on it, I think that's probably the most hurtful thing. Um. Like now, when I say it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't move, it doesn't move me at all. But yeah. like, but as a child, but as a child, I was like, "Damn, word." <laughs> <laughs> For real. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think that's probably the most hurtful thing uh, that I've had to forgive. Yeah. yeah. And just to give context, the type of person he is, he doesn't like when he say he don't hold a grudge, like. Even when we've gotten into it and I've done something that like hurt him or that he didn't like, like I'd be hurt and I'd be mad because like he's hurt and mad and he'll just be like, and come here. Like, cause he can't really hold like a grudge because he doesn't have that literally in his heart. But for me, it's like, I can hold a little grudge. Yeah. Like I can, I can, I can hold a little grudge if it's, 
if you didn't you didn't took me to that point like a month. Yeah, I ain't no uh, Mother Teresa, but it's very difficult for me to to hold grudges. Like, yeah, um, I'm not sure why, um, but it's just not, it's always been hard for me to do that. Yeah. Yeah. What um, advice would you give somebody? Um, far as just having that mentality, like of like not letting stuff, because you know some people how like certain things just get to them, like mm-hmm. everything just bothers them, everything just irritates them, everything is just like oh, like blown up out of proportion. Yeah. If they look for a reason to just be, you know, hateful towards somebody mm-hmm. or just like just not nice. Like, mm-hmm. what advice would you give them? Because that's an act of forgiveness too. Like if someone if, if you, someone offends you, like to just forgive them mm-hmm. and let it go. Like that's the act of forgiveness. It's not necessarily. It has to be something super deep or something super hurtful. Hurtful to, you know. Yeah. Well, I would say, I would say this: hurt people, hurt people, right? So when somebody, um, you know, is quick to anger, uh, everything gets on their nerves. They're, you know treating people nasty um they really just are dealing with a lot of hurt so some advice i would give to them is just to forgive themselves right look at themselves in a different light um not see themselves for what they've been through but for who they truly are in their nature right and in essence you know a lot of people have identity crises and when you have an identity crisis when you don't know who you are um you know, it's extremely difficult for you to see yourself as more than what you see yourself, Mm -hmm. (laughs) if that makes sense. So, you know, a lot of people look at themselves and they view themselves as what they've been through, right? They view themselves as damaged, as broken, as, you know, oh, I'm just an angry person. Oh, I'm just quick to wrath. Oh, I'm just... This you know, just I'm just disrespectful. Yeah, this is just how I am. Well, no, that's a cop out. Okay, you're not a tree. All right, you can change. <laughs> you can move. All right, you don't have to be how you are. People say, well, oh, well, I'm an introvert. Or I'm an extrovert. Okay, well, if you realize that isn't serving you, then change it. Yeah. Right? The most beautiful thing about human beings is we have the ability to change. You can live one way for three years of your life and live a completely different way in the next three years, right? We're not like 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 birds that fly south, right, in the winter. I think that's what it is, right? They fly south in the winter. I'm not sure on that. Dude. that this may not be a good bird reference, but... <laughs> we're we going to go with it. We're going to go you with know it, okay? We're not like that, all right? We can change, all right? We have this unique ability to change our thinking, to change our habits, to re reestablish who we are. Um, because we're created in the image of God, right? And being created in the image of God, we have this creative ability, mm-hmm. okay, to just be whatever and do whatever we want to do or become whoever we want to become. So um, just going back to your question, what advice would I give to somebody that is, uh, you know, clearly our daughter wants some milk, okay? And I do too, actually. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right, so just going back to our verse of scripture, um, again, it was a B- Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 through 32. So um, verse 29 says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So I want to pause right there. Um, you know, again, hurt people hurt people. Okay, so we have a bunch of hurt people walking around in the world. And they like to slander and gossip other individuals, right? Just going to this scripture where it says, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. We should be speaking in a way where it's uplifting to others, right? We should be encouraging one another and not looking to tear each other down. But the only reason somebody would be looking to tear somebody else down is because they feel so low. Mm -hmm. right if you have things together emotionally spiritually and you know who you are and you think highly of yourself you have no reason to tear other people down right there's no room in your life for that because you're just looking to uplift people you're looking to help people 
see themselves as they really are, as you may see yourself. Okay, so only hurt and damage people talk down on others and have, you know, unwholesome talk coming out of their mouth. Now, going to the next verse, it says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Again, this is just talking about the way you communicate, right? Or the way you go about your life, right? You want to get rid of all anger and slander. Why? Because it leads to um, hurt, right? It leads to hurting others and hurting yourself. And then the last verse says, be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgive each other, just as in Christ, God forgive you. All right. So forgiveness is a commandment, right? Now, I don't want to say a commandment like the Ten Commandments, but but forgiveness is something that God expects of us. It's a right? command. It's a command. It may not be a commandment, but it's a command, right? God expects us to forgive one another. Why? Because really we're just reflections of each other, right? There's only one spirit, right? That's in the Bible. There's only one spirit. Even though we're all individual spirits here on this earth, there's really only one spirit. And we were all, we all came from that one spirit, okay? That spirit of righteousness, that spirit of the light, right? That spirit of God. We have all came from that. So we want to reflect the image of God while we're here on this earth. And we can't reflect the image of God when we're dealing with all of this hurt, right? And we have this identity crisis when we are unforgiving to others and unforgiving to ourselves. Um, you can't manifest, you know, who you truly are when you're living that way. Yeah. Now, it's easy to say, you know, I haven't had a, a rough life like a lot of people have had, right? I haven't had to deal with a lot of you know, abuse or a lot of, um, you know, trauma from my childhood, not not the way that some people have had to deal with it, mm -hmm. right? So it's easier for me to say those things. Now, I understand that are people. there are people that go through things that are extremely traumatic, and it's difficult for them to forgive. I understand that. I'm not saying it's easy, but what I'm saying is you should never stop working towards that. Never. Because it's going to come a point in your life where that unforgiveness is going to break you. Mm -hmm. And once it breaks you, it's it's almost like there's no return. Okay? Yeah, it's like one or two ways. Yeah. 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 Now, coming from somebody that have had a lot of trauma and that has been through a lot of things with God, most of them can say it's easier said than done. It's a process, and sometimes that process takes years because what the God is doing is he has to uproot every single thing that happened that hurt you especially if it's a super traumatic situation and it has it has shaped you to who you are as you know an adult who you are as a as a mom a wife a brother a sister whatever you are mm -hmm. it shaped you so in that process god has to dig it up from the root yeah. like just like we use the, tr the tree of life as a reference mm -hmm. you are a tree you know so god has to literally dig those roots up and that comes out in many ways i know when i started my healing process it, it came out in a lot of ways it came out in anger it came out in like resentment it came out like in a vengeance it comes out in so many different ways mm -hmm. whatever those ways are you have to feel it. you have to go through it like you have to start that process because if you don't start the process of forgiving and healing yourself it's just going to eat you up inside and yeah. it's going to start to reflect on the people that you love like people that god has sent in your life like oh my gosh i know they would never hurt me like you mm -hmm. healed me in a way like I know that like you're like you're God sent, like you're here to help me get mm -hmm. through this. But even with God sending people in your life that, you know, can help you in a situation, you can push them away because your pride is so heavy yeah. that, oh, well, I'm not going to ever let anyone hurt me again. OK, well, that's fine. That's cool. But you having that boundary up and you having that wall up is like you're not going to be able to fully heal. Like yeah. for me, I had to become completely open and vulnerable. Like yeah. I had to, I had to let down every guard. Like in with that guard, like being completely let down, I got hurt even more. Yeah. But while getting hurt in the same, like while my guard was down, I was also healing. Yeah. Like it wasn't, 
it was like, you know, like, you know, getting a whooping or something like that. After a while, it's like you get immune to it. You get used to it. Right. And it's like God makes you numb, but it's a numbness to where he can finish, like, killing everything else. That means writing it down. That means looking at that person and not being able to say a word. It's plenty right. of times that, like, someone that hurt me, I had to just look at them, but I didn't have the words to say. Right. Because I wasn't at that phase. If I say anything to him, I'm not doing nothing but trying to hurt you, which is vengeance. I'm trying to hurt you, and vengeance is the Lord. Like, it's not mine. So it's just like you have to take those steps to do the work. You have For to. Sure. Because at the end of the like, before you leave this world, you're going to have to deal with it. Yeah. Whatever it is that you're holding on to, whatever you haven't forgave, you're going to have to deal with it. And yeah. I can say that after, you know years of of working through that like i have forgave every single person in my life that hurt me yeah like my biological that's mom big. like she was on drugs anyone is on drugs like they're not in their right mind like hurts hurts me like unimaginably like can't even describe it and i have nothing but love for her i've yeah. completely forgave her i can sit down and have a conversation with her we stayed a night at her house whenever we went down there. Like, I have no envy, envy in my heart. Like, yeah. no unforgiveness in my heart. But that took a while. Yeah. But I had to take those steps. So. Yeah, absolutely. I, it takes a really strong person to do that, too. Because I'm not sure that if I went through that, I don't know if I could deal with it as well as you have. Yeah. I don't know. But God gives the hardest battles to a strong soldier. Right. So, you know, the beautiful part about life, I realize, and I got to remind myself this all the time, you know, nothing in your life happens to you. Everything happens for you. Mm -hmm. All right. If you believe this book, right, this book here called the Bible, it's on my iPad, but it is the Bible. Um, if you believe the Bible at all, you know, the Bible tells us that God is love. All right. And it also tells us what love is. Right? It says, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast. It's not self-seeking, it's not easily angered. Right? It goes on to tell us what love is. Well, if you believe that God is love, then you know that God would never do anything or put you in a position to have anything happen to you that isn't going to help you. All right, Just because it may seem like it's not helping you or it may seem like something that's just so traumatic, I'm um, like, God, how can this happen to me? No, it's there for a reason, right? It's a part of your purpose. It's a part of your reason for being here. Mm -hmm. um, and it's extremely difficult to accept that. While you're in it. Yeah, it's extremely difficult to accept that while you're in it. Because, you know, you can be in a very devastating situation and be like, you know, how could this be? How could these be in my favor? Right? Well, the law of polarity, <laughs> So I'm going to give you the Bible and I'm going to give you some science. Okay. The law of polarity states that um, everything has an opposite. Okay. There's no such thing as a one-sided situation. There's no such thing as something being bad and only being bad. It can't just be all bad. There has to be some good in it. Right. Mm -hmm. You ever see a one-sided pancake? Never. A one-sided piece of paper? Never. A one-sided coin, never seen it, never going to see it. Why? Because it can't exist. Not that it doesn't exist, it can't exist, right? Everything has to have two sides. It's mm -hmm. called the law of polarity. So when you're in a very rough situation or you go through a very traumatic experience, um, you have a choice. You can either focus on the trauma that you just experienced or you can focus on, hmm, why did this happen to me and how is this going to help me moving forward? Mm -hmm. right we have a choice of what we focus on you see the world that we live in is all mental right the our physical world is just a manifestation of of reality reality is the invisible world okay so this physical world that we see is just a manifestation of our thoughts and 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 the real reality which is the spiritual realm mm -hmm. so so what you think about and what you focus on is going to give you, yeah, it's going to give you a perspective of what's going on in your, in your life, right? Or in the world that you're living in. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to alter your perspective. Mm 
-hmm. Okay. See, I am a very positive person. Maybe positive isn't the right word. Maybe I'm just aware. No, he's a very positive person because me, I'm more so like very logic. Yeah. And very like realistic of like what could and what should or what what might happen. And whatever the situation is, you're like, well, mm, you but, know, but see, that's the thing. This though. is, this is that, and that's where I say, like, we balance each other so perfect, and where God will send you people in your life to help, like, heal you in certain aspects because you healed me in that aspect. Like, yeah. I was so stick on, I have to know what's going to happen. Like, I need to see this planned right. out, and right. then you on the other side, like, man, chill out. Like, yeah. it's cool. Like, it's. I'm stressed about it. That's well, just, it's well, fine. Well, yeah, that's happening, but yeah. this is also happening. Like the just the positive spin on it, but you need that. Like you need that balance in your life. Rather, you're that whether like you're there right now, or you have somebody in your life to be there for you. Mm -hmm. And I've been like, I'm like, okay, well, I gotta pick up the slack because right. you can't always be the one like that. Because what if you, you know, you down bad and right. you need me to be like, okay, well, right, right. Yeah, we gotta lift each other up. Yeah. Here, here's why I say, here's why I say maybe it's not positive, maybe it's just aware, because again, the Bible tells us to walk by faith and not by sight, All right? So, so the reason I say aware is because I, I, I like to think that I understand that all that we see is not all that there is. Okay. So whenever. Whenever we're in a fork in a road, whenever there's a situation that has come about and it and it like visually we can see it just seems like there's no way out in my head. I'm like, oh, it just like this is just this is an illusion. Yeah. Right. Like in my head, that's how I'm processing it. That's how I'm thinking. This about is the it. part that I can see. But the Bible says, you know, you faith. walk by faith and not by sight. You yeah. know what I mean? So I don't I don't necessarily Faith like, is the evidence of things not seen. Exactly. So so he or she who only um, sees life through their physical eyes is blind. Yeah. Okay. That's not faith. That's not faith at all. And, and on top of that, all the things that you see, again, are just a manifestation of the unseen. It's a manifestation of the real world, which is the things that we don't see. So I say aware because I have an awareness that just because something seems like it's this way um, doesn't mean that's what it is. Yeah. Right. So I just try to have the the awareness and the understanding that God is always present. Right. And anything that is going to happen, is going to happen for us. Yeah. And, and not, not and us. not. Yeah. And not to harm us. Right. It's not to harm us. It's to help us. Yeah. Even though we can't see it, you know, the situation is there to help us. So yeah. that's why I say aware. Yeah, that's the um, But, you know, nonetheless, I am pretty positive. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty positive. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, I don't know if there is. Did you have anything else you wanted to say? Though? No, not really. Besides y'all homework. <laughs> This week, forgive, forgive somebody. Forgiveness. Start with yourself. Start with yourself. Start with yeah. yourself. Start with Write yourself. it down. Like, literally... That's what helped me. I literally wrote. I have, I have many journals. Like he will tell you. Yeah. I have many journals. Like eight, and all of them have been written in like twice. Yeah. So the last thing I had to say really was just y'all do that work. It pays off in the long run. I promise you it do. I promise you that. If I had the time to sit up here and tell y'all the things that I've been through, I'm pretty sure this would be an Oprah segment. Like. <laughs> I'm 100% sure, and I'm so happy that I started that work. I'm so happy that I went in, like, and I, like he said, I have seven journals, and what he sees is a couple of them written in, but the ones that's in the storage is front and back, like 200, 400 pages of me writing every single thing down. It works. Write it down. Say it out loud. Practice saying it out loud, and... When you're ready, go to that next step. Say it to the person. Write them, text them, call them. Don't matter. Forgive. It will help you in the long run. It will. And let me add this. By you not forgiving people that have hurt you in your life, it has a hold on 
like your blessings and what God has for you and what your purpose 100%. is. So the longer you hold on to not forgiving and not starting at work and just coming out and saying it, just come out and say it. Like it's either going to end one or two ways. Either they're going to be pissed off and mad and they're going to blow up or they're not going to accept accountability or two, they're going to accept it. Like you mm -hmm. never know, just like you're doing your own self work. They could be too. And yeah. you never know it. But at the end of the day it's for you. It's not for them. Yeah. They have to deal with that how they take it. They have to deal with all of that, what they've done to you. They have to deal with that between themselves and between God, just like you're trying to deal with it. So that's pretty much my nugget for this uh, segment. That's good, man. That's yeah. good. Yeah, I uh, my closing remarks would be, you know, <laughs> forgive. All right, forgive. You don't have to forget, but forgive and it'll serve you well all right it'll serve you well to forgive people um regardless of what they've done to you um you can't allow other people to have that much power over you all right if somebody's still renting space in your heart it's only because you allowed them to yeah all right you 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 the key holder so you allowed them to rent that space in your heart so just tell yourself that Nobody has that much power over you to have you harboring feelings about things that happened in the past. Nobody mm -hmm. should have that much power over you. It doesn't matter who it is. doesn't matter what they did. They should not have that much power to have you still be in your feelings Let go. about something that happened in the past. Okay? You're free from that. Yeah. All right? Let it go. L-I-G, Reggie. Let it go. <laughs> you remember that? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right so we love y'all we appreciate y'all like comment subscribe share all of that do and all those too good things. i got something else just she one got more something thing. else Hold just on. one more thing if you know that you've done wrong to somebody and you know that you have been the person that hurt someone else take take accountability and apologize i don't care if they accept it or not that's a work that you have to do as well Plenty of times I had to apologize, and I know I need to apologize because I didn't want to. Yeah. You don't want to do it, and when you sit up here trying to convince yourself, like, oh no, they did this to me, do it. Yeah. Do it. And that's all I have to say. Like, comment, and subscribe, y'all. We love y'all. See y'all next week. Let love for your heart, family. Peace and blessings. Peace. Bye.